Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another gear review. Now, in this video, we're looking at the Star Rival inflatable kayak. Now, most inflatable kayaks are really a solution for people who can't easily transport or store a traditional hard shell kayak, and that portability comes at a cost. And it typically comes at the cost of performance, comfort, durability, but sometimes an inflatable kayak will appear that doesn't just provide portability. What it provides is some new features, a new paddling experience, and that's what the Star Rival inflatable kayak apparently does, but that's also what we're going to test out today. So let's get this thing pumped up and get right into it. The Star Rival inflatable kayak retails for $945 US dollars for the standard version and $995 for the fishing version. It's 12 feet 6 inches long, 38 inches wide, it weighs 30 pounds, and it has a capacity of 300 pounds. Its primary use is calm water and fishing. Now the boat I have here is the Rival fishing inflatable kayak, but it's pretty much the same as the standard Rival kayak. The big difference, and even the only difference, is that instead of just having one surface mount, it has four additional surface mounts so that you can fully customize the kayak with accessories, things like rod holders or fish finders or light poles. Um, otherwise, they're the same boat. The Star Rival inflatable kayak has a drop stitch construction deck which inflates to 8 psi for stiffness. The sides only inflate the 3 psi. It has a framed mesh seat, a screen drain port under the seat to eliminate standing water on the deck. It has bow and stern bungee rigging. It has one or five surface mounts depending on the version of the Rival you have. It has an interchangeable fin and it comes with a carry bag, pump, and repair kit. It also features a three-year warranty. Man, it sure is nice to have an electric pump when you're dealing with a inflatable kayak or stand-up paddleboard that has drop stitch construction because you can pump it up so hard and to do that by hand is a lot of work. This makes it a heck of a lot easier, even when you do what I did, which I seem to do all the time, forget the right fitting for the valve, and so I have to hold it to the board, but still way, way easier than pumping. Well, I learned a valuable lesson right off the bat. I uh, didn't realize that it required the straps to attach the seat to the board or to the boat. Is this a boat or is this a board? Still don't know about that one. Anyway, I must have left one of the straps in the box when I took it out. So I have three straps I have to use. Not a big deal because I have a cam strap to use instead, but it means I've got a lot of extra strap here to deal with. Well, I have to say that this thing looks like a pretty cool kayak, but enough looking at it. It's time to start paddling this thing. So let's hit the water. Where's the side handle? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, if you can't appreciate a kayak that you can do this in, this kayak ain't for you. <sighs> At some point I'm gonna actually have to do this gear review. Well, I've had almost two hours to paddle this thing around and get a feel for it. And I definitely have a feel for it. And this is what I can tell you. Let's start with performance. This thing is not what you'd call a high performing kayak. It's not fast. It doesn't track exceptionally well. It's just not designed for that. Sure, it paddles just fine. I actually tried it with the fin in and with the fin out, and with the fin out, it's 
quite spinny, it doesn't track very well. With the fin in, it, it definitely helps it go straight better, but it's still, it's very easy to turn, highly maneuverable, not very fast in a straight line. Something I noticed when uh, I had some wind waves come in, hitting them straight on, is even the boat was slapping. It's because it doesn't have this V uh, bow, this V hull that's designed to cut through the water. It's a flat, more like a stand-up paddleboard, where it's going to slap the waves as they come. Now, you give up that performance for one thing, stability. I mean, this thing is so stable, it's unbelievable. It really is more like a floating dock than any other kayak I've been on. You can lounge on this thing. Literally, you could lie out on this thing. Next time I come out here with my daughter in particular, I probably will bring some type of pillow because she'll just have a nap down here. I mean, it's wonderful. And it's so, not only is it so stable, but it's so open that you don't have to paddle in any set position. Your legs, you can be cross-legged, you can sit over on the side of the boat, you can do whatever you want in this thing. So incredible stability for fishing. Uh, absolutely a great fishing platform where you're not trying to cover a lot of distance, where you want a nice stable platform where you can fight fish, you can stand up and fish, no problems in this thing. Uh, just a wonderfully user-friendly platform. Now, comfort, because it's so open, well, it's, it's very comfortable because you can move your legs around, you can stand up, you can lie down in this kayak. Uh, and the seat, too. The seat is elevated. I mean, that's a good, what, five inches of elevation here. And anytime your butt's higher than your feet, it's, you're going to be in a more comfortable position. That's a good thing. But the seat itself is also, it's a very comfortable seat. It's, uh, I wouldn't call it the, the widest seat. It's, it's not super wide, it's fine for me. And I actually have a pretty big, big butt. But if you have a bigger butt than me, then you might be sitting a bit on the, the actual frame. It might not be as comfortable. Now, the only thing that I don't find comfortable about this kayak is the fact that there's no foot brace. Without that, it's just uh, your knees, want to drop it just your your legs aren't that comfortable it would be nice if there was some type of uh, foot support system that could hook into these these loops there i'm sure there is some type of system but it doesn't come with the kayak um so you know that is a, a small area of comfort that could be improved in this kayak um durability i haven't had a chance to grind it on rocks or, or put it through the paces durability wise but what i can tell you is i have paddled star boats i've taken uh, a star inflatable kayak down on a five-day trip um white water uh, trip and it was just not a problem these things are built very well i expect the same from this kayak features it's got everything you need. I mean, the biggest feature is actually the simplicity of it. The big wide open platform that you have to stand up, walk around, store gear. I mean, you could put tons of gear up front and behind. And then this is the fishing model. And so having these adapters. Now, I, I don't have the actual mounts that go on to these, uh, the five different mounting platforms that are in this boat. So I can't show you how that works, but very simple aftermarket piece. You buy a mount that, that screws into here and, and there's threads already in here. So it's gonna be very secure. And then you can attach any accessory here, whether it's rod holders, cell phone holders, you could even set up a fish finder if you're into fishing uh, off here. Uh, I mean, the sky's the limit. Is this the type of boat that I would get? Probably not because I like a boat that performs really well, that travels, that cuts through the water and, and feels like you're, you can travel a long way really quick. But does that mean this isn't a good boat? Absolutely not. This is a wonderful recreational kayak. This is a true wreck kayak. Someone who wants a stable, user-friendly platform to just get out on the water. You could put your dog on here, your kids on here. Uh, you could just, you could use this to jump off and, and go for a swim. It's just such a friendly cottage uh, paddling platform. So if that's what you're after, great choice. Uh, and the price point, is it worth 
you know, is, is it good value at 945 for the standard, 995 for this fishing version? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, any quality inflatable with drop stitch um, construction that provides that, that nice uh, firmness in the hull that, that gives you better performance than you might otherwise have, you have to expect you're going to pay at least or in that vicinity. And, um, and so it's not, I wouldn't call this thing overpriced whatsoever. I'd call it a great value if this is the type of kayak that you're looking for. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, tell me uh, what do you think of this kayak if you tried it before and let me know what kayaks you want me to review next. And we'll see you next time for another paddling tip, paddling gear review, paddling adventure. We'll see you soon.